Thanks a lot. Um, so first of all, thank, thank you guys for allowing me to speak today. Um, this, is, this is kind of exciting to be on the DjangoCon stage for me. Anyways, um, so let's get into it. So I'm going, to, I'm going to be talking about creating dynamic applications using Django and Backbone. Um, so this is really just going to be an introduction uh, to this topic. There's a lot that could be covered um, and not a whole lot of time. Um, but So I'll really gloss over quite a few things, uh, but hopefully leave you interested enough uh, to do additional digging later on. Um, so while it is an introduction, it's not exactly an introductory talk. I do assume familiarity with uh, the Django way of doing things. Um, uh, but before I really start, I want to um, give some of the key takeaways from the talk. Uh, I learned this from my father, and it's, it's, it's for two reasons, really. It's, it's uh, one, because I like to end on time, whether I've said everything or not. And two, because a friend of mine once described my presentation style as pleasantly meandering. So I may not uh, get to everything that I want to. Uh, so those takeaways. Um, first, Backbone JS, it's, it's cool, and you should try it. It's, 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 um, it's really more minimal than most people expect, but it's, it's really just a, it's, a it's, it's meant to be a, uh, an encap or a, uh, a way of, it's, it's meant to be, um, <laughs> excuse me, it's meant to be uh, a, a set of best practices that are pretty much accepted in the JavaScript world, um, wrapped up in a nice package uh, and ready to go. Uh, it is JavaScript. There will be a lot of JavaScript on the screen, and I apologize for that. I know a lot of people uh, have an aversion to JavaScript, and it's understandable. But uh, nevertheless, it can do things. It can allow you to do things that you wouldn't normally be able to do, and I would wholly suggest trying it out at least. Uh, next point is hijacks. Um, accessibility is important, and desiring to create, <coughs> excuse me, a dynamic Ajaxy application is no reason to uh, ignore accessibility. And so I'm going to be talking about uh, hijacks as opposed to Ajax, um, and I'll get to that a little later. Uh, third, Django REST framework. It's uh, Django REST Framework is the framework that I personally use to create REST APIs. It's cool. Um, I think some of the ideas behind it are really cool. And um, as, as a short pre-plug, during the sprints, I'll be working on an exciting new refresh of the framework, um, along with the guy who wrote it. Uh, and there will be some cool things that are going into it, so see me if you're interested in that during the sprints. And finally, um, I'm going to close with, a, I guess, a recommendation for Django, uh, particularly around templating. Um, Django templates are great, but I wish it were a little easier to integrate different templating engines like PyStash or, or PyBars with, uh, with Django um, and taking advantage of uh, you know, class-based views and, and uh, all of that. <clears throat> so. Uh, first, who am I? Uh, as you heard, my name is June Bay, and I work with an organization called Open Plans. And at Open Plans, we make software uh, to make cities better. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so this includes uh, this includes software for things like multimodal trip planning, real-time vehicle tracking, uh, and urban planning uh, from you know the city scale to the neighborhood scale. And at Open Plans, there's an awesome spirit of uh, experimentation and of finding usefulness in, in new things. So there's, uh, there's also <clears throat> excuse me, a premium that we place uh, on making sure that our users have the best experience that we can give them. Um, so we find ourselves experimenting with a number of new techniques and technologies, particularly on the client. Um, on the client side, and one of those that some of us have been using quite a bit lately is Backbone JS. Um, now, I, I should state as an assumption that I believe that it's possible, for now at least, to create experiences in the browser that cannot be achieved 
by programming on the server alone. Uh, some of those experiences may be pure, you know, gaudy crap, but some uh, may be better than you could achieve otherwise. Uh, part of the reason for this, is, uh, I believe, is that a page reload itself can uh, detract from many uh, experiences and is actually um, and is actually necessary and useful far less often than it occurs. Page reloads, full page reloads. Um, so I realize that that's an assumption, not a fact, and having acknowledged it, having acknowledged it uh, we can move on. So what's, what is Backbone.js? So I call Backbone.js an MVS framework or MV something, and what that something is isn't really important. It's just important to know that it fits, Backbone fits into the, the family of frameworks uh, that are concerned with data, which lives in models, and mashups and representations of that data, uh, which is primarily managed by the views. Uh, or from the Backbone.js documentation, which is pretty good after you've got the basics of the architecture down. Uh, Backbone.js gives structure to web applications by providing models with key value binding and custom events, collections with rich API and numerable functions, views with declarative event handling, and connects it all to your existing API over a RESTful JSON interface. And that's actually a pretty good one sentence summary. I mean, it's a long sentence, but it's a, it's a pretty good one sentence summary of what Backbone is. And uh, next we're gonna dig into just a few of those concepts as they, uh, as they uh, manifest in Backbone. So because this is a Django crowd, um, I'm going to use a few Django terms as analogs to some of the Backbone concepts. But bear in mind that some of these fit better than others, um, and all of them are rough analogs. Um, but nevertheless, it's, it's helpful to get just a bearing on how things work in Backbone. So um, Backbone has models, first of all, uh, which are roughly like Django models, except there are some very important differences. For instance, you don't specify the structure uh, of what goes into your backbone models beforehand. Everything is, is managed by the structure of the, the JSON that lives in the, uh, in the models themselves. Um, backbone models also have some form-like responsibilities uh, in that they, they also do validation. So it's not strictly like Django models, it's kind of a combination between Django models and Django forms. Uh, Backbone also has collections, which are a lot like model managers or query sets um, in the way that you can use collections to find or create or destroy or iterate through uh, instances of your models. Um, so models in collection let everything know what's going on in the application by using events. And events are kind of like signals in Django. Um, in fact, functionally, they're a lot like signals. Uh, however, events in Backbone, I feel, are more central to the way that Backbone applications work than signals are in Django. Like, I would, I would venture that um, many, most Django developers rarely, if ever, use, explicitly use signals, whereas in, uh, in a Backbone application, uh, the, uh, in a Backbone application, events are pretty central to the uh, the, uh, the, the backbone application design philosophy, I guess you could say. Um, views. Backbone has views, and that question mark is not intended to be ironic. The, the correlation between backbone views and Django views is kind of a, um, a rough one at best. Um, so they both have views and name, Backbone and Django, but the, the, the way that those views act are different in function. So you can think of, um, this isn't quite precise, but it'll do for now. Um, you can think of Backbone views as managers of a particular section of the page. Um, the view keeps that section of the page in sync with some state of the system. So a view may be set to watch the data in some model, uh, and when that data changes, it'll update the portion of the page that it's responsible for, or it'll be set to, uh, to uh, watch for some interaction from the user and uh, update the models accordingly. 
Um, so uh, as I said, a view is responsible for a certain section of the page, and by implication, other views may be responsible in Backbone uh, for other sections of the page. Um, and views may be nested, um, they may overlap, uh, and there may be multiple views in memory at once. In fact, there often are. Um, in fact, I kind of did you a disservice by saying that views can be nested and overlap, and it's, it's kind of an error to conflate a view in Backbone with a portion of the, the page or the DOM that it, that it manages. A view is more just like a conductor that orchestrates between some data and the DOM or a section of the page. Um, so it's, it's more abstract than a particular section of the page. All right, so that's enough about views for now. Um, we'll come back to it a little later. And then there's routers. Uh, so routers in Backbone are reminiscent of uh, URL patterns in Django, um, but really only just reminiscent. Routers are used for detecting and causing uh, changes in the browser's location um, and handling those cha changes by causing some action. Uh, so this is really handy because it allows you to retain browser history uh, without having to do page refreshes. Um, so it helps create dynamic applications without breaking the back button, so to speak. Um, so routers are cool and reminiscent of URL patterns, and I, I would argue that it's, it's best to kind of use them as you would use URL patterns. Um, even though they're far less constrained, generally they should just delegate to some view functions. Um, okay, so that was, that was a lot, and so I wanna move into a quick example. All right, before I do that though, and a RESTful API. In fact, this is very important, and I apologize for kind of consigning it to a, a footnote almost, but um, this is very important and is kind of central to the way that Backbone works. We will come back to it, um, but for now, uh, let's do a quick example. Um, so for this example, I'm going to be using the traditional Django Polls app, uh, slightly modified, um, and we're going to use Backbone to make it a live polling application a la something like American Idol. Um, so first, if you're not familiar with the Polls app, it's, it's like the canonical uh, Django introductory tutorial, for better or worse. Uh, it allows you to create a poll with a question and several choices for answers, uh, which it then displays as radio buttons, um, and then you can vote, and it takes you to a results page and gives you uh, an option of voting again. So. Bear with me just one moment. I wanna make sure I have the right thing checked out. Do, do, do. Uh, okay. So this is, hmm, it's underneath. So this is the Polls app running on my local host. Uh, I have it open to a question that I put in uh, earlier. Um, and just as a, as a quick example of its functionality, you uh, select one of the answers and click vote and it gives you a page that, uh, that just tells you uh, how many people have voted for a particular uh, option. So it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so now we want to, uh, we want to enhance this a little with Backbone. And actually I want to, I want to be, I want to be mindful of where we're starting from. We're using a functional Django app and we're going to build dynamic client side features on top of it. So I prefer this approach when possible. Uh, because what we build will be Ajaxy, but if we're careful, it can still be functional when uh, we're using a client that does not support Ajax. Um, so, you know, our app will be our app will be functional whether you're using the latest development build of Chrome or you're using a screen reader. Uh, so this this is called roughly 
uh, hijacks, and it's a form of progressive enhancement. It's not, it's not exactly hijacks as the original author coined it, but the spirit is, is pretty much the same. So the idea behind hijacks is that um, you plan for Ajax from the start, but you implement Ajax at the end. Um, again, it's, it's, it's just a form of progressive enhancement. Um, and I, I feel like it's, I think it's pretty important and not done as often as it should be. Um, all right, so anyway, let's start. So the first thing we want to do uh, is we want to plan what's going to happen with our application. I'm going to ask you to ignore the last panel there, um, uh, as we certainly won't have time to get there. Uh, but, um, so what we're going to, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to keep the functionality much the same, except that instead of uh, just, uh, instead of one, causing a page refresh, or a page reload, um, when you click the vote button, there's not going to be a page load. Uh, it's just going to redirect you to the panel uh, where it shows you the, the vote results. Uh, and it's also going to change the, uh, the location so that, again, we don't break the back button. And then also, on that results page, uh, you're going to be able to see voting as it happens from who, anyone else who's voting in the polls app. Um, so it's not super exciting, but it's a good, excuse me, it's not super exciting, but it's a good demonstration of um, uh, the way that models and views work in Backbone. Um, so, uh, Based on, based on that description, we, we have enough information to start creating our backbone models. I'm going to show you, because I've already done this, I'm going to show you what those models look like. very soon. Okay. So, um, let's move this over. And then let's make it bigger. So this is essentially what your model in Backbone is going to look like. It's very simple. Um, like I said before, uh, the, the structure of the model, uh, we're not going to tell Backbone exactly what the structure of the model is going to be beforehand. Uh, it's simply going to infer it from the, from the data that we pass it. Um, now, however, also remember from the Backbone documentation that Backbone connects, quote unquote, connects it all to your existing API over a RESTful JSON interface. Uh, so we need to construct that interface for Backbone to connect to for our application. Now, to be honest, for this, for this itty bitty tiny example application, we don't really need a full-fledged API framework, but we're going to use one anyway. Um, just to demonstrate a little bit of Django REST framework. Um, so, let's load up views. So I, ah, right. Excuse me. All right. So this is what 
our view looks like that is going to give us um, our API for our poll results. So this is, this is using Django REST framework. Uh, and what Django REST framework allows us to do, uh, well, it's a few things. Um, this, is, this is a relatively simple view. Uh, and we could make it even simpler if we used more features from Django REST framework. But uh, this, is, this is what we're going to stick with for now. Um, so using Django REST Framework's views, we can do things like simply return a dictionary uh, from, this, from, the, uh, from the Git handler here uh, and expect the framework to render the data that's in that dictionary appropriately as JSON or as XML or as JSONP, depending on what the client requests. Uh, now our backbone model has, now, now with this, um, our backbone model has somewhere to get the data from. Um, so we can, we can look at that uh, in the browser. Um, and I'm going to open up the console for just a moment. I'm going to go back and we're going to reload. So uh, if, if you're not familiar with, with the Chrome console or the Firebug console, um, and you're doing much JavaScript, it's really something that you've got to get familiar with. It's, it's, it's a lifesaver. Um, again, Firebug console if you're using Firefox. Uh, but uh, I constructed a, an instance of the results class or the results model earlier. Um, and we're just going to do a little bit of exploring around that model. Um, hmm. So if we look at the URL, we see that the URL points to the route that uh, we set up for uh, that API endpoint, for that API view. Um, and if we look at the content that is currently in this instance of the model, Jason, we'll see that it's currently empty. Uh, so there are a few useful functions for models in Django, Re or, I'm sorry, in Backbone. Uh, one of them is fetch. And what fetch does is it basically tells Backbone to go and grab the data from the model's URL and set that data as the data for the model. Uh, so now if we look at the content of the model, we see that it's got our question and uh, our choices with the number of votes for each choice. All right, moving on. Uh, da -da. So, um, so anyway, now we've fetched. Now if we check our model, uh, as we saw before, we have data in our model. Um, a, few of the other, a few of the other useful methods on, um, a few of the other useful methods on a model instance are get. So if we say results dot get uh, question. So get is the function that you use to get a particular piece of data uh, off of the model. And likewise, um, set, uh, you would use set to set a particular piece of data. Um, quickly to uh, demonstrate events. Uh, this piece of code here is just going to say, is just telling Backbone, when my model changes, tell me that it changed. Give me an alert. So uh, if I then set uh, one of the properties on the model 
as expected, I get the, uh, the alert telling me that the model has changed. So, um, all right, so moving on. Uh, the next step in um, setting this up is uh, setting up the routes. Now, with the routes and the views, um, which is the step after routes, uh, there's a significant amount uh, that's going to go into it. So I'm going to I'm going to just go through some of that quickly. Uh, Okay. So this is what a router looks like in, in Backbone. You see here you have uh, URLs that you're setting up. Um, up here you have any initialization that you want to do. Um, I generally use a router uh, as, you know, in addition to, um, you know, delegating to, in addition to delegating to view functions, I use it to um, set up any, any, uh, any data uh, that needs to be initialized for the application. Um, so here I'm creating the results uh, model for the application, um, and later on I'll create the app views. Um, so we'll see what that looks like. Um, and actually, <laughs> in the interest of time, I'm going to skip forward a little bit. So, uh, all of the code that uh, that's in this that's in the example that I was uh, that I was going through is available uh, on my GitHub account, and I'll give you the address for that at the end of the presentation. Um, but let me. Um, so let's just quickly, as quickly as possible, reload this application and see how it's intended to work with Backbone. So uh, this, it looks the same, um, and that's intended um, from, uh, from this page here. But now when we click on one of the vote options, um, we get a, a, uh, you know, a, a fancier little interface um, for uh, you know, uh, reporting on how many, how many people have voted on each, each option. Um, and additionally, if, we, uh, if someone else votes, votes in our poll, you don't see it, but I have it open on my screen over here as well. Uh, we see that information update on our uh, live instance. So uh, this is all done with uh, a view um, for each of those bars that's watching a particular model, uh, which is informed by our API that we constructed with Django REST framework. Um, so all of this, all of this is done um, with Backbone, and uh, quickly, the last thing that I want to want to touch on is just templating in uh, in with Backbone using JavaScript templates. So none of none of the code that I the, none of the code that I wrote for that uses any any JavaScript templating. Um, JavaScript templates can be very useful, but it's good to know when you need to use them. So in, in my views for that project, we have code like this, where I'm basically setting, um, setting, a, value on, um, setting a value on a particular element on the page. Uh, for this, I would say you don't need a template, um, but very quickly, this type of thing can turn into this type of Mad Lib situation 
uh, where, you, where you have a cacophony of concatenated strings. Um, and you should avoid this in your code by any, any means necessary. Um, so uh, there are a couple of, there are a couple of uh, applications that, um, uh, that are around to help you out with this. Um, now the first thing you'll need to do is choose a templating library. Uh, I'm partial to mustache.js myself. Um, some people find mustache a little minimal. Um, and for those people, I would recommend handlebars. Uh, now, Backbone, which is built on top of underscore.js, uh, comes with a templating, um, templating library as well, underscore templates. Um, but underscore templates, I feel like they're kind of PHP for JavaScript. They're a bit much for, uh, for, just, uh, for just templating. They're, they're like writing JavaScript in HTML, uh, which I feel like defeats the purpose of having templates. Um, so uh, I wrote a, um, on my GitHub, I wrote a, uh, an application to help with integrating mustache-like templates, which includes handlebars in your Django applications called Django, Django mustache.js. Um, I've also started experimenting with using um, templates, the same templates on the client as I do on the server um, through an application called Django Bars. Um, so if you're interested in that, check that out as well. Um, and in the interest of ending nearly on time, I'm just going to stop and invite questions. Thank you very much, Jumbe. Um, I'll start the kick, start the questions here. Um, one of the things that's intrigued me, and I'm interested in your experience with Backbone, uh, it's really, really great, but it makes the classic assumption of all JavaScript web apps is that your internet connection is always available. Now, how many people are sitting in this room and don't have a reliable internet connection at the moment? Yeah. Okay. At which point, anything that's Ajax falls over, or anything that has, I want to record this information and cache it up to send later. Is there anything that, you, that is built into Backbone or that is available as an extension to Backbone or anything like that that lets you cache up the updates you want to send? I mean, okay, yes, if data's not available, it's not available, but I want to record this to be sent later. Any options on that sort of problem? Sure, so, um, so Backbone models, um, so for example, when I, when I, um, when I did the, the set, method on the results model in the browser, and it popped up that, uh, that alert box, um, that didn't actually send the data to the server. So backbone models don't talk to the server every time you change properties on the models. Um, they, they store the data, they store the data uh, on the client until you, know, you tell them to send it up to the server. Um, and you know, additionally, they give you uh, they give you feedback as to whether that send was successful or not. Um, so yes, it is it is possible to build into your backbone applications the intelligence um, to uh, to um, I guess to detect whether whether uh, a particular communication with the server was successful and to try again at a later time. Um, Backbone doesn't uh, provide real sophisticated tools for doing so, but at the very least, it does, uh, it does store the data locally um, for you to send at a later time. Okay, I'll ask a second one while we wait for, oh, no, we have, sorry. Yeah. So I work for a university, and so we have, um, uh, work, working for a public university, we have pretty strict accessibility requirements. We've been timid of adopting something like Backbone, even though it's very attractive, the kind of user experience we could create, because the perception is that we'll have issues with screen readers and with the live updates happening, pulling the screen reader to where it, you know, surprising the, specifically a blind user getting surprised by sudden jumps in where they are on the page. Do you have any tips or tricks for addressing that concern? So I'm, I'm not an accessibility expert, to be honest, and um, I, I, I wish that I were more well versed in, uh, you know, all aspects of accessibility. But, um, you know, just 
off the bat, I guess the, the, the primary thing that I would recommend um, is to make sure that uh, your, your site works without JavaScript, um, uh, which is, the, which is the, kind of the basis of, um, you know, uh, the, I guess the, the hijacks philosophy. Um, making sure that you have a functional uh, version of your site that works without JavaScript before adding on um, JavaScript niceties and treating, um, treating the JavaScript as, as uh, additional functionality instead of a, um, you know, uh, I guess, instead of something that's necessary to use, to use your application. Um, aside from that, I don't, I'm sorry I don't have like, uh, you know, specific uh, recommendations for your case in particular. Um, I just, it's, it's, a, uh, it's, it's a persistent issue that I hear coming up with, um, you know, with modern JavaScript development, I guess. So, I, mean, I guess on that topic, how does the example you gave? I'm sorry. The, the example that you actually just walked us through, does that degrade without JavaScript? Does it still work? Sure. Or is it, a, so it does, okay. Yes, yes, actually if you turn off JavaScript, so what, what, um, what that example does is in the views, um, in the views, each view is responsible again for a particular portion of the page. And so what the view will do with that portion of the page is it will uh, grab, basically grab any links or buttons um, in the section that it's responsible for, uh, say prevent default, which means you know when you click this link, don't do what the browser would normally do if JavaScript were out, off, um, and then hijack it to do what I want to do with uh, with Backbone. So if JavaScript doesn't work, if JavaScript is disabled, then that prevent default isn't going to happen, and whatever the default action is, is going to occur which cool. is to say links will, will, links will still work, buttons, form submissions will still work, and so on. Thanks, we'll, we'll look into that, appreciate it. Uh, hi, regarding accessibility, I was wondering if you had any tips or suggestions for not duplicating uh, your URL routes, both in your URL patterns and in your backbone routes at the same sure. time. Yeah, and um, so I, I've, that's something that I've thought about uh, quite a bit, and I don't really have a good answer for. I've been thinking about maybe writing uh, an app that you know takes your URL spec and converts it into um, you know backbone style uh, uh, route definition for you to just basically spit into your page um, to to bootstrap your data uh, essentially. So in other words. Um, you know, on the server, read your URL spec, um, process it so that it, uh, it is the form that Backbone will expect, and then include that in your context uh, for your view, your Django view, and actually, you know, print it onto the page uh, and use that as your Backbone route uh, object, if, if that makes sense. Um, so I, I've been I've been toying around with the with the idea of you know maybe uh, writing an application that that does that for you, but I haven't um, yet. That's that's um, uh, that that repeating it, repeating yourself just really really bothers me, um, and I'd like to have a good solution for it as well. Okay, thanks. And uh, along the same lines uh, with the. Have you looked into using PJAX at all uh, for sending uh, the actual rendered HTML so you're not duplicating your templates both in HTML and the, the JavaScript mustache or handlebars or whatever you're using? Sure. So um, I have looked into using PJAX. I've used it on a couple of projects, actually, and it's, it's, it's cool. Um, I prefer the, um, the option of sending data over the wire, though, you know, as you said, then you do have the case where you're duplicating your templates. Now that's, that's why um, I started the Django Bars project. Um, and Django Bars uh, is really an attempt to um, be able to use uh, handlebars templates through the, through the PyBars project. PyBars is a port of handlebars to Python. Um, 
uh, to use handlebars templates exactly as you would Django templates, um, allowing you to use the same templates on both the server and the client. Um, so, uh, but yeah, so I prefer, I prefer sending data over as in, you know, a, uh, a JSON blob or an XML blob over the wire as opposed to snippets of page fragments. Okay, great, thank you. So I'm coming at this in an opposite direction than most people. I'm more familiar with the front end than the Django side. Hmm. Um, so part of the issue that I'm trying to deal with right now is upgrading or, or upconverting legacy Django forms into something that's more bootstrap compatible. So they already do everything they're supposed to in Django, but trying to overlay some of this uh, functionality like you're showing. Is there any, any special path or any, anything you can share for, for uh, trying to up, upgrade some, some standard legacy forms, especially ones that um, do dynamic, already do dynamic adding of fields and stuff like that? Gotcha. So you're saying you have, basically you have a, an application, I don't know if it's Django or not, but. J it, Django admin, let's, let's take like a Django admin type template. Like if you had to take Django admin templates and then make them bootstrap compatible or, or backbone, backbone compatible, um, what, do you have any tips for that upgrade path or is it just start over, don't bother? Wow. Um, <laughs> um, Well, it, it, it would be a big project. <laughs> um, I'm not sure I have particular tips. Um, it's, so it, you know, it, it won't necessarily require starting over, but it's, um, I don't think that there's, I don't, I don't know of a shortcut to doing it. I mean, you know, open up an API and, um, so one of the reasons that I'm so keen on um, getting uh, other templating systems uh, that are integrated with Django, things like Py, PyStash and PyBars and whatnot, um, is so that going forward in the future, uh, I don't have to um, you know, worry about uh, duplicating my templates um, um, on the client and the server. Like I feel like the, the, biggest, the biggest issue that you would face uh, in um, trying, to, try, trying to make something like that uh, backbone compatible is that you would have to basically rewrite your templates in um, some sort of JavaScript template, templating, templating language. And I know that there are a lot of templates in something like you know, Django Admin um, to rewrite. Um, so I feel like that's going to be the, the biggest hurdle and then you're going to have two different sets of templates to maintain and so on and so forth. So, um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know if there's really a shortcut for that, um, for upgrading legacy stuff. Cool. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, I'm not sure. My, my question is related to the kind of op opposite notification. Like the, you have shown the, the nice thing where you were voting on the other side and uh, the other browser was updating. Mm -hmm. So it, it, you need to have a way to send the, the browser, like all the connected browser, to tell them like you can fetch and get new data and it will uh, update the thing. Do you use, like, which kind of technology are you using for this? Uh, are you, so if, if I understand your question correctly, you're asking, um, uh, basically how the communication was handled for uh, updating, updating the models between different clients? Be, yeah, between different clients, like live client connected in, in, a, in a room or anywhere on internet, someone vote and the, the widget gets updated. You, you need to notify Backbone that you can fetch new data and it will uh, pull them and update the widget with the view and all the good things you explain. But at some point, you need to tell them, hey, guy, go and grab it from the API. Um, sure, OK. So the way, that, the way that I'm handling that in, in the polls application, if, again, if I'm understanding correctly, is just I'm doing, I'm doing polling. Um, um, now, that's not, that's not necessarily the way that you have to do it. Um, backbone, 
uh, one of its strengths, I guess, is that it's pretty minimal and um, uh, it, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty straightforward to override the, the method of syncing models with, with the server. Um, in fact, backbone, each, each backbone model and collection has a method called sync that you can override uh, to, um, to control how backbone, or backbone models communicate with the server and how they send data up, how they receive data, and when they uh, uh, send and receive data. Um, so it's up to yourself to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you, you just you have to do it. Okay, thank you very much, Jumbei.